I was recently invited to go on a control operation to remove hogs, beaver, and coyotes from a major hunting operation in a neighboring state. So sit back, relax, and see what it was really like to go out of state and cold roll into territory. And let's see what Mother Nature had in store for us. You not only open the door to education for a young person, you have Welcome to Arkansas. Now you never know what you're going to encounter when you roll into a job for the first time. Sometimes your accommodations are quite nice and sometimes, well, they leave a lot to be desired. But it looks like on this trip, we hit the jackpot. These are our accommodations and these are my partners in crime. Well, it looks like I got left. But seriously, there are thousands and thousands of acres out here. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be setting this little land bridge. And uh, I'm going to be doing it on foot. So I've got a bucket full of snares and a pocket full of lure. So let's get started. All right. As you can see, I am on a long road. And on one side, we have an open lake. And on the other side, we have a small slough. And of course, the beavers are crossing back and forth over this. One problem that I'm running into is that there's so many places for them to cross, there are no well-worn crossings. In other words, there are no smoking hot sets. So let me show you how I'm setting this up. When I, when I stop to make a set, I'm gonna put one set on the lake side, one set on the slough side. And I'm using different sets for each side and I'm also using different lures. I'm using one lure on the lake side, one lure on the slough side. So let me show you what I'm doing. Now you can see I'm on the lake side here. All I'm doing is I am wiring that snare directly to the piling. I have a support wire coming out, clamped onto the snare. I've got my loop set. Then I've got a stick pushed in at an angle and a smeared lure all over that stick right there the idea is the beaver swimming around in the lake smells the lure he comes in I've already got the pilings here they're used to seeing that and they go right through the snare at least that's the idea now let's take a look at the other side now on the slough side you can see it's just featureless out here so what I've done is I've lured up a stick right here, smeared some lure on the, on the trail, and simply put a normal snare set in, fenced it down a little bit, and I've got this extension cabled off to a tree up there. And hopefully that'll show up on down there. You can see there's fresh cutting right there, fresh chewing. So they're in here, and if I can just get them to respond to my lure, hopefully I'll have a catch here. Well, the first day is coming to a close. I've got a late start. I only got out here about three and because uh, it was such a long drive. And uh, so I've got one line out, probably uh, I think about 10 sets is all I could get out. And uh, this is just an amazing paradise out here. You can see the ducks coming in. This is just amazing. There, I mean, there's just hundreds of them hundreds of them hitting the water. I had a beaver swim by just a second ago while I was still putting sets out. But uh, I think it's going to be a good night and I think it's going to be a good weekend. We shall see. Back straps, but hey, we got plenty. We got <laughs> possum ain't no trouble here. No. Well, 
Well, they're, they're doubting my word that uh, they're doubting my word that otter back straps are halfway decent. Now it's not as good as beaver, but but it's edible. So now they're talking about skunk back back straps and possum back straps and all of that. But if y'all want to see what's going on, here we are in the kitchen, and uh, check this stove out. Man, look at that stove. We got a nice pot of chili. We got some good sets out tonight, this afternoon, and we're gonna check them in the morning. So this is what it's what it's like. Y'all say hello. 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 Alrighty, we'll see you. Alright, now this is the camp house where we're staying. It's uh it's about 0530, still dark outside. But uh getting up, getting moving around, getting ready to get dressed and go check sets. But they are in the process <clears throat> of renovating, so everything is stripped down. There's uh, as you can see everything is pulled out. Um they're putting new ceilings in and everything like that. So let me just walk you through here and show you um, where we're staying and what it looks like uh, when we're on one of these trips. You can see there's the fireplace. We've got a little bar right there. This is uh, an open opening to the porch and it's dark outside. It's still dark. The sun's not up. And over here we've got where the ladies would normally stay in their bath area. A map of the property right here. A little uh, private area to make phone calls and uh, have private conversations. Now as we come down here, this is uh, sleeping quarters. And you can see it's full of stuff because, uh, like I said, they're remodeling, so they've got everything taken down. Shower, bathroom area, lockers. Speaking of lockers, look who has a locker here. And uh, more sleeping area. This is my room right here and fortunately I have a room to myself I've got my luggage and my little lamp I don't know if you can hear it but somebody's alarm's going off and they're not up yet now let's walk back through same type of area on this side with a curtain <clears throat> you can see this is all being renovated through here. This is the kitchen area. And boy, look at that stove. You're talking about churning out some food. You can definitely do that. And then there are other rooms. Deep freeze, freezers. And then out here is a mud room and on out to the woods. Now, not every trip is this luxurious or this well appointed. This is a really, really nice establishment here. So, just a little glimpse behind the scenes. All right, sun's almost up. There is the camp house right there. Right over here, we've got a meat processing facility, got the coolers, got the shop. And we've got all of our trucks lined up here. We've got, uh, we've got our buggies and four-wheelers. And uh, we are getting ready to roll out. But uh, it's a beautiful time of the morning. The lake is still. Uh, so we still got a moon. Good and high. But uh, this is the, the quiet before we, uh, we head into the woods and uh, check the line. We've got several hundred sets out. So hopefully it'll be a good, good day. All right, now I had a snare set right there in the water. And so the, to catch the beaver swimming along the bank. And you can see my extension cable is pulled tight. And there he is right there. Let me get a little closer. There we go. He's all tangled up. There we go. Good looking beaver. Not real big, but you know what? That's what we're here to do, is catch them. Let me take care of the dispatch, and I'll have to remake this set. All right, looks like we got another one here. Checked a set just prior to this. The beaver had chewed the cable and escaped, which put me in a very foul mood. But, uh... 
let me go ahead and take care of this fella. Nice looking beaver right there. Good looking beaver. Okay, now here was one of my piling sets where I smeared the lure on the piling, suspended the snare out, and you can see there he is right down there under the water. Usually that happens because they'll wrap around something and drown. But uh, let me uh, fish him out. Well, this was the set where I tied off to the uh, culvert, had my loop right there, and it's been pulled over there. So I hope I got something. Hope, hope this one didn't chew out. Now I don't see any water moving. There we go. Looks like he drowned too. All right. Let me get let me get him up. Oh boy. Yeah, look at there. Tangled all up in that. That's a mess. What what a beautiful beautiful morning. Ducks on the water. Clear, crisp, cold. The sun's just breaking the horizon. I'll tell you, buddies. This is what life was meant to be. All right, fellas, now here's when the work starts. I've got uh, four beavers here. Not a bad run this morning. And uh, got a nice looking hog here. Good looking hog. And uh, I am on skinning duty, being the new guy. So I'm gonna process all of this, get all the meat taken care of. And uh, then this afternoon, it'll be time to go set some hog snares. setting up for hogs as you can see there's a smoking hot trail coming up out of the creek going up into the woods the problem is there is nothing to anchor to or support to so I've anchored off to this tree over here and that's one reason when I'm doing hog snaring I like a long extension cable okay I'll have a six foot snare and a ten foot extension cable and this is exactly the reason why the next thing is I am traveling light so my support is a number 11 wire now what I've got to do is I've got to get the wire stuck down in the ground but it's got to be solid and stable notice how I put a bend in the end of that wire when I shove this down in the mud that's going to keep that wire from swiveling around okay if I didn't have that bend if I just stuck a piece of wire in there it would not be stable so I'm gonna run that wire down in there like that get it in there good and deep now at that point there's my snare support and I'm just gonna slide the collar on hang on so you can see there's my uh, support collar a little piece of wire stuck in the ground now anytime you're on a slope you don't want the snare to hang vertically you want the snare to hang perpendicular to the trail so I've had to use a little chin-up keeper stick right there. Now when that hog hits it, that's not going to be enough to interrupt the functioning of the snare. But that will keep it perpendicular to the trail instead of it hanging vertically uh, up and down. Alright, I'm here with my sidekick, Travis. And uh, I think we found a hog trail. What do you think, Travis? You think any pigs are using this? Look at that. Oh yeah. Man. All the way through. And uh, I know that's not showing up real well on camera, but it's a hundred times more than what you can see. And uh, so we're just going to set some snares up. And uh, here, Travis, you want to do the honors? And we'll just uh, do one from beginning to end. All right, first thing I'll do is just take the snare. And as always, I have my snare, my extension cable, a swivel already built into one unit there we go that's what we're that's about what we're looking for right there and you can see I got a heavy-duty barrel swivel on that 
and uh, it's got a thousand pound braking strength. My snare is a six foot snare, thousand pound barrel swivel, and then a ten foot extension cable. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set this trail, and what I want to do is I want to tie off good and high all the way around this group of trees. The reason why I want to tie off high is if that, snow, that uh, hog gets caught, he's not pulling straight away. He's pulling down at an angle, and he's not going to be able to get all of his force behind it. And these trees will act as a shock spring, as a shock absorber, and uh, that's always a good thing to have. It's a natural shock spring. And so all I'm going to do is pull this through like that. And that, you can see how that's, that's going to give. Now, when I come down here to make my support, I've got 11 gauge wire. Don't be stingy on wire. You can always cut wire off, but you can't add to it. So I'm going to cut me a piece about three feet long. Then I'm going to put a bend in the bottom of that wire something like that, like a U-shaped bend. This is going to allow me to stick this end in the ground and it not swivel and then this will be the end that supports my snare. So let's see, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get right beside this trail and I'm just going to push this into the ground. And there is my support wire adjust my loop that's the finished set just like that well it's the end of day two and we spent most of this afternoon setting hog snares and we found some incredible sign and we hung a lot of snares we did a lot of gang setting and uh, I'm battling a cold so uh, I'm getting hit pretty hard I feel like uh, somebody uh, has beat me with a stick and uh, <clears throat> but it was a lot of fun and I'll be shocked if we don't have some good catch in the morning the problem is is we've got a storm moving in tonight and uh, they're calling for torrential rain multi-inch rain it's so one reason I didn't put out a lot of new beaver sets is because with heavy rain coming in, you know, they're going to be underwater anyway. Um, we'll see how it does with the hogs. Uh, all you can do is hope. But anyway, uh, we're going to get some dinner going. Tonight is sort of uh, the big night, so we're going to uh, throw some ribeyes on the grill and uh, bake some potatoes, drink a few beers, and uh, we'll be back at it in the morning. All right, this is uh, the morning of day three. This is the uh, more glamorous part of the job. Uh, it rained, torrential rain, all last night. Solid, and uh, the place has turned into a mud hole. I am uh, checking part of my line on foot. And we're not sure if we can uh, even get out to uh, the hog line that we put out uh, yesterday. It may take a day or two for it to dry out enough to even get there on four wheelers. The problem is, is I'm also uh, getting sick. Um, I didn't sleep at all last night, so I, I am uh, very run down, very exhausted. And uh, that's just the way it goes. That's the reality of the situation. So I am, uh, I'm walking and uh, short of breath. I'm having to pull, pull my line as I go. And uh, I'll make a decision later today if I stay or leave. If I have to leave, because of um, because of how I'm feeling, that's going to put an additional burden on the other guys who will have to check my uh, hog snares, and that's just the way that goes. Uh, but with over 200 sets out, it's a it's a lot of work. So anyway, let me uh, let me get on down the line and uh, see if I got anything this morning.
nice looking yoke. All right, here we are in the pouring rain, and I am soaked to the bone. That's my ride right there. And uh, we got us a nice, nice looking coyote over here. And uh, Chip's about to do the honors, extract him from the trap, and put him in the box. Checking the paw, make sure there is no damage to the paw whatsoever. This is what we want to see right here. This is why we modify these traps. There are no cuts, there's no damage on either side, no blood, no Perfect. tears. Uh, that coat's gonna be great. Yep, absolutely. No damage whatsoever from that trap. Yep, and we're so rough with these little coats. <laughs> I mean, all we got to do is give him a happy forever home. We'll be good. Uh, somebody else will feed him, medicate him, house him. He's not going to die. So we can go live happily ever after. He's got it better than we did under Obamacare. I was going to say, this is like Chip's care. It's the Chip Obama care. care. That's right. <laughs> all right. That's all we do right there, guys. Woo! Looking good. Man, that's a big one there. Mm -hmm. That is a nice otter. Look at that. He's wrapped up. You can't leave now, Tim. You gotta cook this otter back there. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Guys, that snare. When I was, I saw this little trail. He's actually off of it. This is a trail still undisturbed. Yep. Right here. I saw it trail and I said, that's otter, right across the bank you can't see is a canal, right through these woods, literally you can see the opening is a lake right there. I said, that's an otter trail, he's coming back and forth. But I didn't want to burn one of my cut when the, you know, I got Carl's snares he makes that are great, all the swivels up, everything. Yep. But I wanted to set it. I didn't want to waste my steel for my coats and all. So I looked and I've been carrying for the last 30 years. A snare that the guy that taught me in the, the 86, 85, 86 the trap, he gave me some of those snares and it's that old. Wow. And I said, I can burn this right here when it gets done. I don't want to carry it anymore. I cut the snare and, and not use it. And there we go. There we go. All righty. go not a real big one that'd be a good eating size right there you can see he is uh, he is wrapped up you can see I cabled off way over there you can see the extension cable coming across you can see the barrel swivel on there and then he's got it all wrapped up and he's stuck right there nice looking little hog though nothing wrong with that Well, it was a good trip. As you can see, the weather still is not cooperating. I'm, uh, I'm still not feeling very well, but you know, that's the way it goes. But it was a wonderful experience. It was a wonderful trip. And it's always great uh, getting out of state, trapping new areas that you've never been before, meeting new people, 
uh, and just seeing a different part of the country uh, that that makes it all worthwhile we caught a, a nice selection of hogs had good luck on the beavers uh, pretty good luck on the uh, coyotes and uh, a couple of us had a uh, really good luck on the possums but uh, anyway I hope this was enjoyable uh, worth watching and maybe uh, entertaining and educational if you'd like to see more please consider going to patreon.com slash meat trapper and becoming a supporter and by doing that for five dollars a month you'll unlock a lot of bonus content that cannot be posted on YouTube including my resistance trapping uh, uh, series which is trapping from a militia or a wartime uh, situation all the back episodes of meat trapper radio which there are I think 85 of them up there now plus um, bonus articles and bonus videos from time to time that are available nowhere else. Uh, so thank you very much. Hope to see you there. We'll see you next time.